Thank you for joining us. On Tuesday, Zimbabwe's central bank, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, introduced a gold-backed digital currency to be used as legal tender in the country. The aim is to help stabilize the Zimbabwean dollar and protect citizens from currency fluctuations. The southern African country joins other African states like Nigeria, Ghana and South Africa that have introduced digital currencies even as several others have plans to do so. But the IMF isn't taken in by the plan. It believes that Zimbabwe's solution may lie in conventional measures like the country tightening its monetary policy stance and removing restrictions on the exchange rate at which banks authorized dealers and businesses transact. I should mention that the IMF also raised issues last year with the Central African Republic's adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender. That decision was reversed a year later. Joining me to look at the Zimbabwe situation is Linda Masarira. She's the president, labor economists and African Democrats. She joins me from Harare, Zimbabwe. We also have Tawanda Mutungama, finance and business analyst. He joins us from Tajikistan. A pleasure to welcome you to Village Square. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. I will start with you, Tawanda. Thank if you, you can hear much. me, I think we should um, start off this conversation with an understanding of what a gold-backed digital currency is. Tawanda, can you hear me? Uh, currency is a currency which would say is a real currency. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, uh, I can. Go ahead. The uh, currency is a currency which is a uh, real. It is currently real money, and um, gold over. This uh, has been the history of, of real money. But uh, often, uh, this is not sustainable. It eventually collapses. Uh, all currencies uh, the world over had already been uh, based to, and then it became fiat. So it's not a sustainable solution uh, from what I think. Thank you. All right, Linda, let's bring you in. You are on the ground. You understand the environment there. Why, in your thinking, was the e-currency uh, necessary, uh, despite all the concerns that has been raised about its use and efficiency? Thank you. Um, what is important is the world must understand that Zimbabweans are tired of incentivated poverty. We've got a lot of inconsistencies that are happening in our country, a lot of economic saboteurs. And at a personal level, I actually applaud RBZ for introducing the gold backed digital tokens in an effort to reduce demand for the USD. It is unfortunate MF and World Bank want to keep on policing African states and how they run their economies. If their advice worked, I don't think that Zimbabwe would be in a state that it is in right now. They've abused and, and, and used African states for their own experiments. Zimbabwe's economy started tumbling in 1995 when they actually introduced ESAP, which came from the very same Bretton Woods institutions. It said that most African states don't realize that they are in a sorry state because of the advice that they actually get from these Bretton Woods institutions. It was important for the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe to introduce the gold-backed tokens to stabilize the Zimbabwe dollar so that uh, people will be able to store value and boost demand for our local currency. It is also important for value preservation because of the rate at which inflation is going in this country, it's so absurd and we've got an attitude problem towards the local currency. It's actually a good move. I applaud the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe for introducing this gold bank digital currency. And for the Bretton Woods institutions, they should know that Zimbabwe is a sovereign country and they cannot continue to dictate how Zimbabwe should run its economy and they should just stay away from African economies, which they have destroyed. All right, Linda, let me jump in and ask. You are speaking from a very informed position, but for someone who is on the street, possibly someone who does not have access to um, the digital currency, so to speak, um, 
of what importance do you think this will be? What is the, I think, let me rephrase that. What is the level of acceptance by the ordinary man of this digital currency? The ordinary man is still trying to understand what this digital currency is. And I am sure that the Reserve Bank and all the relevant authorities will actually go on the ground and on what this digital currency is. But the importance of these gold back tokens is that they are actually going to value preserve the, the, the Zimbabwe dollar and they will serve as an investment um, driver because a lot of people not want to do investments where Fed is, is not stable. So it is important to ensure stability. And I think this is the direction which we're supposed to be going as we try to fix our economy. Um, I, I'm also, I'm, I mean, I'm speaking purely from a layman's perspective on this conversation because I know that um, it, the, the, it's already in use. It's not like um, it's on the way. So from your vantage point, what is your assessment of the efforts being done or put in by the government to enlighten the citizenry as to the importance of this currency if the point of its introduction is to help alleviate the suffering of the masses? What the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe has been doing is they've been um, issuing out periodic um, notices about the, 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 the gold-backed digital currency. And day in and day out, even on their social media handles, they are talking about it, raising awareness of this new digital currency, which is legal tender. And a lot of people are starting to appreciate. Though I am not sure if people in the rural areas have heard about this yet, we are still yet to do an assessment on whether or not the news have reached the rural areas where they've got no access to internet. All right, Tawanda, let me come to you. I had to like really uh, go at Linda to get you know a sense of how the situation is on the ground. Let, let's get down to some of other issues involved. Um, I understand that backing a digital currency with gold involves having a certain measure of gold reserves and depends on the current market value of gold at the time. Now, according to state-owned media reports, um, Zimbabwe in April had about 350 uh, kg of gold in reserve valued at about 22.80 um, a million dollars at the current price and, it, and the plan is to build the reserve to about a hundred million dollars. Uh, the question would be to you, um, can they build that reserve they are looking at? And again, from a layman's perspective, shouldn't this have been, um, um, you know, considered all of these considered and maybe done to a certain degree before the introduction of the e-currency. So, like for currencies to be to be to be introduced and uh, for currencies to be sustainable, there's need for a change of order. So we need to to understand uh, that uh, the current order uh, is the U.S. dollar order. So. <laughs> So to, to, to imagine or to, to dream that uh, Zimbabwe can come up with a new order without uh, a tectonic shift um, in phase is possible. Um, so I probably if it was uh, the introduction of the yuan, uh, probably that, um, <laughs> that, that would be something that we could talk about. But uh, in this case, um, the introduction of, um, of, 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 of a new currency uh, for Zimbabwe, which is being marketed uh, internationally, is not uh, sustainable at, uh, at, at all. So like, uh, for me, I would, I would, I would agree with uh, what the IMF has said, uh, to say work with either the US dollar or probably the, the, the yuan, you know, and it, it will be sustainable. Because, okay, if, uh, if, if the whole world knows that we've got a trillion uh, dollars worth of gold, how will it be sustainable? Like, um, how do you protect uh, a trillion dollars worth of gold without uh, having some people come to, to, to get it? Or with, so what kind of military uh, force uh, 
uh, is there to, to be able to protect these uh, resources. I, I think um, it, 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 it's limited. So um, it, it's, it's not imaginable. Uh, but to, I, I mean, you, you, I, don't, I don't know if you heard uh, Linda's submission um, earlier, because I, I stayed with her just to get an, uh, a sense of what the situation is on the ground. And she seems to be very optimistic about the potential of the adoption of these digital currency uh, by the government. And she is of the opinion that IMF and other foreign bodies should stay away and allow the country deal with its own issues. So. Um, isn't that something that should be commendable? And on, on the flip side of it, um, should it be, let me just ask what your thinking is uh, to her response to uh, the digital currency? So I, I think that she, she's being patriotic and, um, and this is good. I commend her for being uh, patriotic. But uh, for me, I'm being practical on, um, on, on how we can do it. I actually did a, my MBA dissertation was on the demonetization of the Zimbabwe dollar. So the Zimbabwe dollars that you are, that you are showing on the screen, the trillions, I, I, I did a study on, um, on, 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 the, on their demonetization. So at, at a certain point, we said these are no longer money. Then uh, I did also a, a radio meeting when we were introducing uh, bond notes. And at that point, at the bond notes, with uh, to to go oh, one is to one with the with the U.S. dollar, and my point was uh, in my dissertation, I concluded it uh, with a question to say, how does a country with so much gold uh, suffer in terms of currency? Uh, yes, they need to to, to have a gold backed uh, currency, and um, and also in the interview in the radio uh, interview, I also spoke about this questioning: how do we suffer in terms of currency? How do we have so much inflation when we have so much gold? But uh, the question is the economic fundamentals are not the economic fundamentals are not allowing uh, the Zimbabwean government to collect enough tax revenue to fund its So what we have is that there's the inflation to, to pay for land, which will be so valuable and eventually they lose value. And how they lost value? Uh, the government kept on printing for, for obligations so that they cannot, they do not default. And as they print more money, we start to lose value, and it becomes more and more inflationary. And um, and why would the government keep printing taxing? And why avoid tax? Because we don't have in business to tax. We don't have enough people who are employed. To be taxed. So the solution is not uh, saying uh, we need a gold backed uh, currency. So, because once we have this, it will still not sustain uh, enough, um, we will not have enough resources. For example, if we talk at, uh, about 100 million, uh, what is our budget? Our budget is in the billions uh, for, for, for in a year, maybe 300, uh, uh, probably 3 billion uh, in a year. So, like, how, how far can a, a 100 million go? It's very little. So eventually, since this is digital, uh, some digits will, will be added to the computer so that it becomes uh, three billion. And we keep on selling. And when we cannot give the people the gold according to their to the digits, uh, the, the value loses. And this has been done. Then we'll come out and say hey, it's no longer equivalent to gold. It's now <laughs> equivalent to half the amount of gold. Okay. That it is worth and uh, on and on. So this uh, cannot work, and this will not be sustainable. And as a people, we need to have integrity between before the the whole world. So that okay. our name is respectable. So okay. we can do this at an international level. Let's put our house in order. Put fundamentals in order to create employment. Put fundamentals in order to have uh, businesses running. Ooh, and how do we? Do that? Okay. We okay. Um, the international community. Uh, Atawanda, I need to come in. I was actually going to ask you to uh, make some suggestions, but that is after I've spoken with Linda. Linda, you've heard all that Tawanda has said about his skepticism as to the viability of the option that's been taken uh, by Zimbabwe. I want you to, if you wish, to speak uh, on that as well as um, I'm going to reference something you uh, suggested earlier in your opening remarks, and that's that uh, digital currency uh, would help with uh, preventing 
uh, money laundering and uh, stealing and other financial crimes. Uh, so that is the second part of the question. Do, how do you think that this digital currency will prevent the kinds of crime that take money away from the people? Okay, I would like to respond to what Tawanda was saying. I, I have a problem with these bookish economies that we have in Africa, not only in Zimbabwe. They want to continue telling Africans about fundamentals, uh, these bookish economic theories, which have evidently failed to work in most African states. What have these economists done in Africa to create new economic systems that actually work in Africa and that to fit the African nations? That is the question we're supposed to be having. The problem we have with these bookish economists is they are always trying to bash their own countries, bash African initiatives, and anything that is organic. Linda, is Linda, let, I, sorry to interrupt you. I, I need us to be a little more, um, 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 uh, I don't know how to put it out, a little more uh, forward thinking in this conversation. When he made his submission, he, yes, he gave we, reasons why he thinks that this is not a great idea. So if you are, you don't like what the IMF is saying, what are some of the things that give you confidence to say that this adoption at this time is the right decision to take? I mean, you, you need to get others. This is the right decision yeah. to take? This is the right decision to take because Zimbabwe is also under economic sanctions from the U.S. And a lot of people tend to forget that. We do not have direct access for U.S. dollar other than remittances and a few exports that we have. So we have the mandate to ensure that we strengthen our own currency. There's no country under the sun that has ever stabilized its economy whilst using a foreign currency. The efforts being done by the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe is to ensure that we restore the proper value, the true value of the Zimbabwean dollar and that state economy and de-dollarize to be able to use our own currency like what other African countries are doing. I don't think that is that is so hard to understand. But as usual, the critics, because they do not want to see Zimbabwe prospering, they will come and attack every initiative that is coming from Zimbabwe using economic theories which have been tried over and over again in Zimbabwe and have failed to work. All right, Linda, um, we're almost out of time, so I just have to give uh, Tawanda about 40 seconds to just give us his closing thoughts on the subject. So, so it's simple. We need to, to talk to the global community and, uh, and ask for sanctions to, to be removed and ask for conditions that they need. Then we are connected to the global money, money system. And once that is done, our economy is okay. And how can we do that? Um, we can have um, probably a government which is acceptable uh, to the international community, which means if it's election time, the government can be changed, or the same government which is there can just uh, ask what is required to be connected uh, to, to have all sanctions removed by EU or the US, and then, then we are good. Then our economy starts to work. As simple as that. If probably Linda has made the president, it's, a, it's also a solution, and we, we influence her. Uh, to, to talk to, to, to the U.S. And, um, and, 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 and the EU and just meet the conditions that are required. And right. our economy will tick. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Tawanda. And thank you, Linda, as well, for speaking with us on the subject.